Hello and welcome back everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about defining the schema and uh, the type definitions and resolvers. So in the previous video, we talked about the basic introduction about how to create a GraphQL server. So in this video, we will extend that example and we will create our type definitions and resolvers. So this is how we were just passing these hard coded. So now what we will do is we will create our own type definition and resolver. So we will be getting these type definitions and resolver from an external file and we will be passing it. So there are many arguments you can pass to this GraphQL server. First is type definition resolver context. Apart from that, uh, here we have Apollo service configuration. I just try to search it. Uh, if I try to expand it, then you will get Apollo server. Just to get what all argument you can pass, this is the main typing and here you can see uh, all the options which you can pass for the server info. This I want to have a look. This is extending config. Yeah, so this is the main definition of config which you can pass to your Apollo server. We are passing type definition, we are passing schema, you can pass context, introspection, mock. So when you look at the type definitions, you get a lot of understanding about like playground if you are just using another service to expose these graphical interface to some port, engine, extension, cache control, plugins, all these options you can pass as a GraphQL options, GraphQL query options while creating the server. So I'm talking about all these options which are defined in the type.ts for here. And for now we are just passing the type definition and schema and you can pass the context. Context can be some kind of a data source which you are passing to your, uh, you can say the methods which will actually responsible for getting the data. So schema is of type GraphQL schema and GraphQL schema will have all these different types, query types. We can go into the deep to understand all these things. Okay. So type definition and schema. So for that, what we can do, I created SRC folder and in the SRC, we will define our first schema. So in the SRC schema.js and we will import GraphQL query GQL from or you can just uh, require it. I mean all different ways, either common JS way of importing okay now we will define a type definition type def equal to and inside this we will define our type definition so let's see our first type we have is user i was just talking about user and recipe so you can say you can compare it like a type script interface where we used to define the types so id uh, this is of type int. So the data types are different in uh, GraphQL. We are writing capital I int, capital S string, like we have a name. Then we have email. This is also of type string and you can see menu. And menu is of type recipe array. Now what I'm putting is I'm putting this. This is actually making it required. Okay, your type definition for user has should have all these arguments. Now I created some custom type, right? Recipe is not a scalar type like int string, int string boolean number. So recipe also I need to define, and it's the same thing. In the recipe, what I will have is all the definition about ID and all. ID title ingredients directions and user okay now I can define the query and mutation in my schema so here I'm doing a type definition right so I will be defining the query and mutation and I will be defining the implementation of those, those queries and mutation in the resolvers so just define just fix the rule first you will define the type definition okay I have the user type I have the recipe type because from the APIs, we will always be returning user object, recipe object. We will not be returning only single attribute. Otherwise, single attribute for the single attribute, you don't need a type definition. Okay, so here I have a type. 
query and in the type query here these all the queries I will be triggering from the client side id of type int and it is required and what I will be returning I will be returning a user object so from this query it is clear that I will be when I hit the query user I should get a user object when I have all users all users then what should I get the user array right so this is a get user by id for us this is get all users another is we can just get a all recipe it will return an array of recipes and this is the type we have defined so always take care of type definition and this is required and we have one single recipe and which is accepting okay you need to pass the recipe id based on that i will be able to send a recipe okay so these are the queries to fetch the data from the server now there can be some mutations which will be talking about okay i wanted to create a user i wanted to create a recipe we have only two mutations right so these mutations are same as query only the difference is we will be using mutation for them okay in this mutation okay sorry here i will be having different mutations like create user because from client side we will be triggering only query mutation and subscription and this mutation obviously will be used for creating the resource updating the resource so they will have enough payload like string we are passing then we are passing email which is also of type string then maybe a password which is again of type string and what it is going to return it is going to return a user object i mean one user and we can have a create recipe another argument here we will be passing user id user id of type int and title ingredient uh, directions these are of type string all are required attributes and what it will return once everything is done recipe object right so what we did we defined a type definition we created two custom type and query and resolvers right similarly now how when where we are going to implement all these we have i think these queries and these mutations right so let's create a resolver so here you can say const i'm just writing it for the sample purpose here first we will take care of all the queries okay we, we have different queries in the system right if we just schema here i have a user all users recipe and all so i will just put that for my reference here in the bottom okay now first query which i have is it will be a sync maybe user so it should match here we are accepting user and uh, what we are doing is we are accepting the id so now these arguments are important here we will be passing the root the arguments i am just destructuring and getting the id directly from the arguments and the maybe a context or some kind of a data source but i don't have any data source right now so i will not be passing here and whatever you wanted to do here you can do so other methods also you can define Okay, what else we have? All, all users. Here we don't have ID or any other argument we need. We will just returning all the users, all recipe. And we have last method which is get recipe by ID. That should match with this one. So here we are accepting ID. So root and I will be passing id as an argument and maybe a data source later 
so from here we can just return what we wanted to return like return models dot find by id find user find users all these methods we'll be talking about and we'll be returning the data so these are resolvers for query so similarly we have a mutations also so in the resolvers we put a query this query is closed here now after this we can also define the mutations i will just pasting it here so in the mutations we have a create user and create recipe right both are async method so in this schema we had a query and we had a mutation both we need to define in the resolver which is indirectly an implementation what data they are going to receive from the system from the data source so here we are doing models dot user dot create similarly you can do mongoose dot model dot save to create the object in the request body we are getting all these arguments so first is a root second is the argument object another is a context so in the context you can get the data source and all those things similarly we have a create recipe mongoose model dot create recipe dot create you pass all the arguments so it will create a collection in uh, a, a document in the collection it will also create a document in the collection and now we are already importing that in the index.js the type definitions and resolver once you boots up the server we should be able to test all the both the apis but right now we don't have any data source what we can do is we can just return a simple array with all these dummy properties when you do create array we can have a global users object and do dot push on to that okay similarly this implementation works okay this is about uh, the very basics how we are defining that okay so in the next video we will talk about more about uh, how we can extend it so currently we are just creating only one single resolver one single schema but what if you have multiple objects multiple relationship lot of entities and models then we have to create a structure of these uh, schema and resolver for individual entity so that we will extend in the next video